What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, team of undefeated three division world champion, five time world champion, superstar boxer, who is widely considered by many to be the face of the sport of boxing, if not definitely one of the faces of the sport of boxing in Javante Tank Davis. Javante Tank Davis is 29 wins, no losses, no draws, 27 big wins by way of knockout. He is 28 years of age, five foot five with a 67 inch arm reach, and he's a southpaw. With that said, again, Javante Tank Davis is viewed as the cash cow and one of the faces of the sport of boxing. He along with four division world champion, Mexican superstar boxer, who is widely considered to be the face of the sport of boxing, if not one of them, uh, in Saul Canelo Alvarez. Saul Canelo Alvarez has a record of 59 wins, two losses, two draws, 39 big wins by way of knockout. He is uh, 33 years of age, five foot eight with a 70 inch arm reach, and he is the undisputed super middleweight world champion. With that said, Everybody vows for opportunity to fight against uh, Canelo Alvarez and Javante Tank Davis as they bring in a lot of revenue uh, and they help get a lot of fighters their biggest paydays, okay? And so with that said, there was a situation that recently brewed over the past 72 to four days, 72 hours to four days, okay? Um, and that's between undefeated Olympic silver medalist, two division world champion, former unified super featherweight WBC, WBO, well, super featherweight world champion, superstar boxer who is now a lightweight title contender, Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson is 20 wins, no loss, no draw, 10 wins by way of knockout. He is Shakur Stevenson is 26 years of age, five foot eight with a 68 inch arm reach, and he's a southpaw. Shakur Stevenson has the opportunity right now to fight for the vacant WBC World Boxing Council lightweight title that's being vacated by undefeated, undisputed lightweight world champion superstar boxer Devin the Dream Haney. Devin the Dream Haney is now 30 wins, no loss, no draw, 15 wins by way of knockout. He is 24 years of age, five foot nine with a 72 inch army. Devin Haney is now going to move up to junior welterweight, 140. And he's gonna challenge the two time WBC junior middleweight, junior welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, Regis Ruguru Progre. Regis Ruguru Progre is 29 wins, no losses. Uh, excuse me, 29 wins, one loss, no draws. 24 big wins by way of knockout, 34 years of age, five foot eight with a 68 inch arm each. He's a southpaw. So they're gonna fight December 9th, San Francisco, California, uh, at the Chase Center where the Golden State Warriors play. So now Shakur Stevenson is vying for an opportunity to fight for that vacant WBC title. He pushed the fight against two time Olympic gold medalist, three division world champion, former unified lightweight world champion, Ukrainian superstar boxer, Vasil Lomachenko. Vasil Lomachenko turned down the fight with Shakur Stevenson. Then the number two fighter in the WBC lightweight rankings is Shakur Stevenson himself. So they push for the opportunity to fight the number three guy in the division, which is I see Pitbull Cruz, Mexican superstar title contender. And he turned it down. So then, process by elimination, they landed on a guy who was calling him out, well, at least his promoter was calling him out, in a uh, uh, lightweight superstar title contender, Frank the Ghost Martin. Frank the Ghost Martin is 18 wins, no loss, no draw, 12 wins by way of knockout, 28 years of age, five foot eight with a 68 inch army, southpaw as well. A lot of southpaws, right? He's a southpaw as well. And Earl the Truth Spence Jr., a man down promotions who signed Frank Martin, 
have been pushing for a fight with Frank Martin and Shakur Stevenson for quite some time. To which Shakur Stevenson responded and said, if you think he's ready, then let's make it happen. Right? So now, process by elimination, the WBC falls on Frank Martin and Shakur Stevenson. They order the fight, go to a purse bid. Well, the purse bid was September 5th. The purse bid gets removed because according to both sides, confirmation was that by the WBC, both sides, Shakur and Frank Martin's side, they agreed to the terms. Now we know, as I did an interview with Bob Arum, legendary promoter, top ranked CEO, Bob Arum, he stated that, um, Bob Arum stated that we know we had the confirmation from the WBC that Tom Brown is going to negotiate the deal for Frank Martin, not Errol Spence and Man Down. So it's TGB, Tom Brown's promotions. And they agreed to terms. And then there was a notification sent out to top rank and that informed them that Frank Martin was no longer interested in the fight. And he was going in a different direction. That got the boxing world upset. The fight was already uh, supposed to be set for November 16th. Obviously, there's things that need to be signed. November 16th, 16th Las Vegas, Nevada. And Bob Arum, on my show today, as you can go back and check the interview, Bob Arum stated that they sent Frank Martin everything he was looking for in the contract. And so, with that said, the money he was looking for, they said it was a little high, but they sent it to him anyway to make the fight happen. And Frank Martin turned it down. So many, it got the people speculating. How could Frank Martin turn down the opportunity to fight Shakur Stevenson? Opportunity to get the most money he's made in his career to fight for a vacant title and to have a marquee fight and a fight that he was calling for. At least Errol Spence was calling for this fight in behalf of Frank Martin. And so the speculation came that it has to have something bigger on the table. It has to be a bigger opportunity. And that bigger opportunity comes at in the form of Javante Tank Davis that many people start to speculate. It could be Javante Tank Davis. If he's going to step away from a fight with Shakur Stevenson and this opportunity, the only valid excuse and reasoning would be to fight Javante Tank Davis, who's the cash cow. He's going to pay more than Shakur Stevenson fight. Uh, the WBA, World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, expected to elevate Javante Tank Davis from the regular champion to the super champion. And as Devin Haney's going to lose that title, uh, so that would mean that Frank Martin will be fighting Tank Davis for a belt, more money, as Tank Davis is a cash cow, and on a bigger stage. And it's in-house. They both went PBC, Premier Boxing Champion, found their advisor, Al Heyman, Showtime, Showtime President Sports, Steven Espinosa. So it just makes sense to keep it in-house, right? But now Tank Davis' team has come out. Both Coach Calvin and Coach Kenny have both come out now and stated that uh, they don't have interest in fighting Frank Martin right now. And Coach Calvin says that they're both longtime trainer, mentors, father and big brother figures to Tank Davis. So they're both now on record saying, Coach Kenny said they no, no interest, no negotiations, nothing happening. Coach Calvin says that Frank Martin essentially needs to know his worth if you wasn't that guy in the amateurs what makes you think you that guy now you need to know your worth and get a deal done to fight Shakur Stevenson so we know Javante Tank Davis is not fighting Frank Martin and then coach Kenny uh excuse me coach Calvin then doubles back and doubles down and even says that once again their interest is at least his interest is a rematch with I see Pitbull Cruz, who um, Tank Davis already beat. I didn't think it was, uh, I, I, many people thought that Tank was exposed and uh, 
Tank Davis, you know, uh, Isaac Cruz actually won the fight. This all because Tank Davis didn't get a knockdown or a knockout. And every time Javante Tank Davis fights an opponent and Javante Tank Davis doesn't get a knockdown or a knockout, uh, then people automatically uh, state that Javante Tank Davis was exposed or he lost. He has that effect. So because of that, many people are saying that they're calling for a rematch. It was a competitive fight. It was a good fight. Uh, it was entertaining, but I didn't think that it gone as a rematch. And I thought that Tank Davis clearly won the fight. Now, Isaac Cruz is 25 wins, two losses, one draw, uh, 17 wins by way of knockout. He is 25 years of age, five foot three with a 63 inch arm reach. They fought uh, back in December of 2021 and Tank Davis won a unanimous decision. Isaac Cruz was a replacement opponent for Javante Tank Davis. He was initially supposed to fight Rolando Roley Romero. And Roley had gotten into some uh, issues that had to be resolved and was pulled from the fight. And Isaac Cruz was a late replacement. So with that said, many people started to say, well, uh, the fight was competitive and Isaac Cruz took it on a short notice. Imagine what he can do with a full training camp in preparation for Javante Tank Davis. He'll actually get the win. I don't believe he will. I still think Tank Davis will get the win. But there, uh, he did an interview with Mill City Boxing. Shout out to Mill City Boxing. And uh, he stated that, you know, um, uh, 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 Isaac Cruz has a huge fan base. Mill City said, man, Isaac Cruz did an interview or some sort. He went Instagram live and he had... 1700 people there he got a huge following the whole interview was in spanish and people support him and coach calvin said you know he applauds the fact that uh uh the the fan base of uh uh isaac cruz who's mexican and canelo Alvarez, who's mexican you know the mexican fan base you know they play to their mexican fan base he said he applauds that and he has a huge following we made him a superstar and we want to get out yet we want it we want to do it again right so isaac cruz is the plan and Tank already fought twice this year. He fought January against Hector Garcia, WBA, super featherweight world champion. He knocked out Hector Garcia. He fought against, that was January 7th of this of this year. Then he fought uh, April 22nd, Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena in a mega fight with King Ryan, Ryan Garcia, Mexican superstar, lightweight junior welterweight title contender. He knocked him out in the seventh round, dropped him in the second round, knocked him out in the seventh round, and did 1.2 to 1.4 million pay-per-view buys, the fifth highest gate in Las Vegas for a boxing event. He he already had two mega fights. The, he did the number one gate at the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. against Hector Garcia, the fifth highest gate against Ryan in April. So now to close out the year, I, I completely understand fighting Isaac Cruz. And it looks like that's the direction they're going to go in. So that means that Frank Martin has one option and one option only. And that's to go back to the Shakur Stevenson uh, negotiation table. To which Bob Arum said that when he, I interviewed him, that the phone line is open. If they want, if Frank Martin and his team want to reach back out. And uh, Frank Martin posted on his social media that uh, he didn't ask for 50-50. And... He's more than willing to go back, and he wants to fight with Shakur Stevenson as well. Frank Martin also hit me up, and he said, in my, uh, uh, text me back, and he said, I'm going to come out and clarify everything. So let's see how it unfolds and plays out. But Shakur Stevenson is the best option, in my opinion, for Frank Martin right now. If it wasn't Tank Davis, it got to be Shakur Stevenson for this opportunity. Now, whatever uh, terms he don't like in there, they got to make the adjustments and get it done. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. I'm gone. Peace.